Hello, my name is Josiah Clement, and today I will be talking about the Advanced Packaging Tool, otherwise known as APT. Um, this is used on any Debian distribution of Linux. So I'm using Ubuntu today, you can use uh, Kubuntu or any other sort of Debian that you can find. There are a lot out there, so I'll just start get, getting going here. Now this, first and foremost, I'm doing this tutorial for beginners who are not used to Linux um, and just giving a comparison between how you do things in Windows and how you do it in Ubuntu here. Now Ubuntu is a fantastic operating system because it's nice and easy to use. You can use it on older hardware and um, as you can see it, it does look quite good. So let's get started. Now the app packaging tool basically is an easy to use interface to install software packages on a Debian based Linux operating system. So um, what we're going to go through is there's three different ways in Ubuntu that we can use it. The first two ways are um, a GUI, so it's a graphical user interface. Now the first one I'll go through is um, Synaptic Package Manager. You can get that in your systems administration. Now this is using the GNOME um, X Windows. So anything that you want to change on Linux, you need to use um, your root password or your super user password, so just remember that. Now if you look here, we've got um, basically anything you want to find. Now you've got email applications, I'm going to look for a video application here, all down the way here. Now if you look here, that this is it gives you the version that you can see tell you if it's installed and descriptions as well with it. Now the best thing to do is reload and it'll get your sources for you and it'll get the sources from your closest your closest um, repository. Mine happens to be New Zealand so I think it's Orcon who has it. So I'll click here mark for installation. It'll tell you, tell you all the information that you need to get for it too. You can get the screenshot now this is the reason why I like, um, why I really like AppGet and the app packaging tool because unlike the other ones that you can use in Linux um, like RPM and anything else, um, just for instance with the other um, application, other distributions you'll have to actually go through and install them via the source code which is really hard to do. Um, so with this one here, all my libraries, all my um, all my required applications that need to go off, it gets installed automatically. So just go through and look at them, all the libraries here that we have to install, and you just go mark and then just go apply and it'll install as well. So I'll tell you which ones to be installed, and tell you what to be changed, tell you how much it needs to use, and it has to be in, um, how much needs to be downloaded as well. While this downloads, it's quite good because most of your Linux software is a lot smaller than your Windows software. This is because being open source, all the libraries are shared, so usually it relies on other applications to do some of its work for it. What I want to talk about also is where your repositories are kept. So let's say if Ubuntu doesn't support a specific application, you can't find it when you look through your uh, Synaptic Package Manager and you're doing a Google search for a program that you want. Um, you can either look for, um, you can either download the .deb, um, pa .deb package which you can install or you can actually um, go through and get the repository that it's located in. Sometimes they'd have it and click on settings and repository and here you can actually do um, you can actually go in and click what you want to get done other software and you can just go and add it and normally it's just deb and then your address and then you know Ubuntu Lucid and you can add that source there with it so you update so you can have all your configurations there now, okay, so that's you know your syn synaptic package manager. Um, you can use that, 
and that's a fantastic way of getting it done. The second way you can get it done is your Ubuntu Software Center. This is a nice graphical user interface, and it, it lays it out in a nice fashion. Now, all these programs are actually um, checked by the people who make Ubuntu, which is um, Chronicle, and so these will have continuous supports happening by them, and um, they're really good. You know, most of these programs are really good getting it done. So, and let's go to science and engineering. And I want to get some computer science tools, so I'll just get the K turtle. Install that. Again, I need my password. And the password's there to to make sure that no one stuffs anything up besides from you. So just be careful when you are using um, a super user account. So you, you log into a normal user account and then you install things via super user. So it just means that no one can come through and, and really destroy your system that easily. So the nice thing is, is you can actually go through and look at all the software that you've already installed and you can remove it. Um, the nice thing about it, what I like to harp on about is the fact that if you want something free in Windows, nothing really comes for free. Either they come with spyware or they they tell you, well, you can only use it for 30 days and then we'll start you know, an annoying you by posting messages that you have to buy this and that. The great thing about Linux in general and the GNU open source community is that they believe in creating great software and there's a lot of people that actually contribute to great software being made so you've got fantastic applications you can do almost anything without paying any money it would be good to donate if you can uh, but it's nice and user friendly and it's and it's really fast so once we're getting that ready to get done if you need any applications to be run that you've used on Windows, for instance, do a quick Google search. I've come across this really fantastic program, which I'll do a tutorial on, but it's Player Linux. It's basically another user interface, a GUI graphical user interface on top of Wine, which is the Windows emulation that we run on, on Linux here. I haven't used it in about six years, and I decided to try it, and I was really surprised at the, the programs that we can actually get running on Linux nowadays. So I'm really happy about that and I can't wait to show you a tutorial on it. I'm, I think I'm going to install um, Microsoft Office 2007 on it and maybe a few games as well but I'm doing a course that needs access so I'll get that done. Okay all that software has been installed and we can go. And now if we go to applications and then go into education K turtles there that we've just installed from package manager. Now fantastic. Now thirdly, this is probably the most for me this is the easiest way because it's nice and simple. Um, but what we can do is I'll just run you through a few of the commands that we can use. Sudo is to get your um, your super user account. Now it's called apt-get, so and that's just saying that I want to install the VLC player. App cache search will actually go and search for application for me. So what I can do is I can go search VLC it'll show up all the VLCs that I can do so then I can go back and go app get install space VLC hyphen data to get that um, now I can go and do that again search video grit the pipeline will actually make me the pipe here enables me to run a second command so grip I'll show you me all the video editors I can get here. So I can go app get install. Tell me how much I have to download. All my um, 
extra packages, required packages for it. And so 18 megabytes for um, a video editor is not too bad as well. Okay, so thank you for watching, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.